and said, um, you helped me before, can you help me now to um, make sure the evidence is preserved? I don't want them throwing the physical evidence in my case away because they think my case is over, because someday I think I'm going to get out of here. But now that she was in private practice, Allison had new rules she had to follow. I couldn't do what I had done for Rick when I was a law school student because I had an employer and I had malpractice insurance and I couldn't just sort of help him out on the side. But Rick's mother wouldn't give up. She knew that Allison was her only hope. I went to her wedding and I'm screaming, you know, he's not coming out, you know, you're the, you're the last hope, you know, that, that we have for him. When Allison returned to her office from her honeymoon, she tried one last time to help. I decided to approach a senior lawyer in the firm and I went to Jim Brosnahan's office and I said, I need a partner to agree that this firm should take on Rick Walker as a pro bono client. Brosnahan agreed to sponsor Allison as long as she handled Rick's case herself. It had been eight years since Rick Walker was convicted and sent to prison. Allison couldn't afford to let the case get any colder. She went right to work. She wrote the district attorney's office and said, could they please preserve the evidence in the case? Now that Allison was officially Rick's attorney, the DA's office was required by law to take her request seriously. The DA agreed to preserve the evidence while Allison built her case for one last appeal. What I did in this case was to reinvestigate it from the ground up because I knew that the only way that I was going to be able to get Rick Walker out of prison was if I could prove who had killed Lisa Hopewell. And that meant hitting the road and dealing with some very unsavory characters. Many of the people who had the evidence I needed were incarcerated in state prisons around Northern California. And so I did a tour of prisons visiting witnesses. And everyone she talked to told the same story. Lisa Hopewell was killed by Rasan Bowers, her drug supplier, and Mark Swanson. What my witnesses told me was that she owed her drug dealer money. And Rasan Bowers and his friend, Mark Swanson, went to her home and that she threatened him because she knew about his criminal activity, drugs and otherwise, um, and she maybe didn't know you don't threaten your drug dealer. Allison believed she was finally turning the corner. I got him to agree that he would do an interview with a DA investigator who came up to talk to him. Then I thought, I think we might have critical mass here. Four years after reopening the Lisa Hopewell investigation, Allison had her witnesses, but she was a long way from having her man. Only the DA can get a man arrested. That's something the state with its authority can do that I as a mere defense attorney cannot. Coming up, Allison faces the uphill task of convincing the same DA who put Rick in jail to let him out. It had been over 10 years since Rick Walker's family had contacted then law student Allison Tucker to re-examine their son's conviction for the murder of his former girlfriend, Lisa Hopewell. Now, Allison was convinced that Rick Walker was innocent. I had uh, a number of witnesses that knew what had really happened on the night that Lisa Hopewell had been killed. Even though the elected DA, George Kennedy, remained convinced that Rick was the killer, he assigned his newly appointed head of homicide, Karen Sununu, to examine the case. She wasn't part of the investigation. She wasn't part of the conviction. She wasn't part of the appeal. And she could look at it anew and say, you know what, this doesn't look right. In the fall of 2002, Allison arrived at the Santa Clara County DA's office to present her case to the new head of homicide. She did something that I don't think any other lawyer had ever done. She put together a PowerPoint presentation and took it down to the Santa Clara County District Attorney's Office and presented it. 
Sununu agreed that Tucker had a strong case. But to convince District Attorney George Kennedy that his office had prosecuted and a jury had convicted the wrong man, Allison needed more than a PowerPoint presentation. She needed evidence. The last I knew, Mark Swanson had fled the state. If we could find him and if we could get from him a DNA sample that we could test against the physical evidence in the apartment, some cigarette butts with saliva, for example, that maybe it would come back to Mark Swanson. On the strength of the case Allison had presented, Karen Sununu agreed to help her track down Swanson. And the DA was able to trace him in Texas, get him arrested on the parole violation, bring him back to California, and get a DNA sample from him. Swanson's DNA sample was compared to DNA found at the crime scene. It just so happens that one of the cigarettes found in the apartment where Lisa Hopa was killed had Mark Swanson's saliva on it. It took until a decade before they went out and got the DNA off of the cigarette butt and it matches the person who they were told all along did it. Finally, Allison had proof that Rasan Bowers had lied about Rick Walker, that Mark Swanson was with him on the night of Lisa's murder, not Rick. Karen Sununu called me up and she said, George Kennedy and I believe that Rick Walker is innocent and we would like to see him released. Rick's mother was at home when Allison called with the news. She said, uh, Rick's coming home. And I said, what? She says, no, he's coming home. They finally listened to the evidence. You know, we've proven that he's innocent and he's coming home. After serving 11 years for a murder he didn't commit, the DA's office overturned his conviction. On June 9, 2003, the entire Walker family reunited at the courthouse. I had to go out the back door of the courtroom and I creep up behind everybody, you know, with, with my humor and my wit and go, what are you guys waiting on? What are you looking for? And when they all turned around and saw me, it was like, ah! I immediately started crying. It was a very, very emotional, emotional day. Very emotional. In Allison Tucker, the Walker family found a true hero. She is a hero. She's tenacious when she gets in the ring. She doesn't give up. You only see a few people like that in an entire lifetime, you know. And uh, yeah, she's a hero. Sometimes the justice system makes mistakes. We lawyers have a sacred trust to do our best every day on every case to make sure that only the guilty are convicted and that the innocent are set free.